Stella here. Welcome back to my studio. Thank you guys so much for being my awesome supporter. I think I'm about 417 of you guys strong. Thank you so, so much. When I first started a YouTube channel, I didn't even think I would get any followers, but here we are. So anyways, what am I doing today? Uh, I would like to have a little chat with you guys because I'm actually revamping my entire YouTube channel to focus more on what it's like, really, really like to be a working, living, breathing, working. Uh, I just said working, right? Independent artists. So as some of you guys may have known that I basically changed my career trajectory out of the blue back in 2021 when I developed my very first lupus flare-up. It literally came out of nowhere. Uh, my body basically started shutting down. It was pretty intense. I was out for two whole weeks. Next thing I knew, my previous career in the fashion world uh, died overnight literally died as i struggled to figure out what the hell was wrong with me so i actually didn't even receive a diagnosis until august 2023 so last year i know i've been releasing a lot of videos from here and there whenever i felt better but today is the very first day okay maybe not the very first day this year is the very first time in my life where i actually feel normal my energy is very good my medication is working that I say to myself, look, Stella, you're going to create better content for all these people who have been there for you online. So I thought, OK, you know what? There are a lot of viewers who are artists trying to make in the art world. Doesn't matter what type of artist they are. Why not share genuine, real content to help them as well as showing other, you know, chronic illness sufferers like myself, how I manage that on top of having a career because your life does not end just because you are chronically sick by like myself and so many other people out there. I am not going to create any videos that are clip baity because I can't stand them. I'm not going to have titles that says how you can make 30,000 a month just like that. I did it in three months. No, no. I mean, that's not real world. Honestly, um, unless I see their tax return, I don't believe a word they say. <laughs> you know who I'm talking about. The type of videos I'll be creating for you are like this. Shot literally from my working studio. I'm not renting a separate, what I call the YouTube ready, Instagram ready, you know, videos. My desk, my working desk is it's like crazy messy. And I'm literally going to start painting after I finish shooting this and how I manage my day, you know, as a licensing artist, how I manage my weekend as an independent artist who show her work in museums and galleries as well. So yes, I'm constantly painting. I will share with you tips about running an art business. I will share you tips about how to manage conceptually where you're going as an artist because this is not just about how much we sell. It's also about the type of statements and visions. How do you materialize all of that? Find the right balance and make it work. So your career trajectory actually makes sense to you. <laughs> this will be a very exciting ride. So today, I know that was a super long intro. I'm going to share with you what a typical day looks like as a licensing artist. So let's get started. A typical day for me usually starts at 8.30 or 9 a.m., sometimes 8 a.m. I mean, given my lupus condition, my energy level is the best very early in the morning and usually by 3 p.m. I'm like half dead. Anyway, so what I'm actually doing now, and this is tip number one, is to divide up the watercolor paper. I usually use Portofino. Oh, speaking of which, if you guys are interested, I am listing all the equipments and supplies and materials I'm using down in the description below so that if you're interested, you can go ahead and purchase it for your own purpose. Anyway, coming back to this. If you have seen my other YouTube shorts or Instagram reel, you'll know that it, when you start working for a licensing company, they don't just send you one single request per month for one single painting. They are a commercialized company. They license your images, the artworks that you create to retailers, manufacturers, you know, anybody who needs to put an image on some sort of merchandise. These manufacturers usually request 
pairs of paintings. So I'm usually painting the same subject, let's say in a set of two, four, six, eight. Uh, I haven't attempted to paint 10 of the same subjects, but I've heard that it does happen. So if you think about it, if you were to paint really big, first of all, you will run out of your you know, paint supplies very quickly. Then you will run out of your storage space. And let's say you end up having to spend extra money to rent a storage space. It just doesn't make any sense. It will cut into your profit margin. For me as an independent artist, I need to pay the bill. So every single painting needs to generate income for me. So any way I can avoid extra expenses, I will. There's a separate YouTube short that you can watch how I store these inside acid-free boxes and tissue wraps. I found the most efficient way to set up your workstation is per set by a subject. So you select the same colorway and you use the same brush. I'll paint the first set in the morning of the same subject, then take a lunch break and come back and paint a different set in the afternoon. How do I know what to paint? As a licensing artist, you will be given some sort of trend report like this one right in front of you or a brief, a design brief by the art director of the company or the VP of design. Doesn't even matter what their titles are. So the most important thing once you receive the brief is that you need to study it. And there are a couple key things that I look for. Number one, I look for what are the colorways. Usually a really good art director will even give you the palette, the pen tone numbers of the palette. And I try to match as much as I can. And then on top of that, what is the look? I will going for a vintage look, a um, rustic look, a country look, like what is it? What's the feeling of it? And then the next thing I look for is the technique. What type of technique are we talking about? Is it more like an abstract bow stroke or is it more refined, more elegant? So these are the things, if I can't find it in a brief, I will have a conversation with the art director. Briefs are confidential materials belonging to the licensing company. So the website was just only for reference, okay? Uh, what's happening in front of you are different types of flowers I painted based on different briefs. There will be reference images uh, provided on the brief. It's your job to make sure you don't copy it. You only use them as inspiration and come up with your own version of what the licensing company and their clients are looking for. And this is pretty much all the different types of looks, feels, and techniques I ended up having to play around to get what they want. And this one obviously is a lot more refined. That one uses a wet canvas technique. So as a licensing artist, the first thing you have to be comfortable about is to paint in different different types of styles and hands, whatever you call it. So it is not really for everyone, especially if you're only accustomed to painting one way. Or take this as an opportunity to develop different ways of painting. So here I am bopping my head in a time-lapse video for the next two hours, studying the brief as I draft it, erase it, you know, trying to get the composition right, trying to get the feel right before I start putting in the colors. So now once I have figured it out, I start to put in the flowers again. Unfortunately, because it is confidential, I cannot show you the final work, but I usually paint both acrylic and watercolor, or I switch it up to alcohol ink, depending on the feel, again, that the brief is asking for. Given my physical limitation because of lupus, I try to maximize my time and energy level by drafting the set of two paintings at the same time. And as I paint one, I will wait for the other one to dry. And once the other one dries up, I'll go back and finish it up. Then lunch break. In other words, if you want to be a prolific artist, manage your time well by painting in twos, threes, or fours. I mean, that's the maximum I can take. While you wait for the first set of painting drying, you start painting the second set. Once the first set dries up, you scan the two paintings into your computer and start prepping the file, digitize it, clean it up, do color correction, whatever it is that you need to do, then you send it to your licensing company. And then repeat the same process for your second set or even the third set if you're being very ambitious. But of course, always listen to your body. If you're not feeling well, then don't even paint at all. Just have a professional conversation with your licensing agent and trying to figure out a new deadline. On a separate note, I do apologize that all I can show you guys is the top of my head. <laughs> 
depending on the type of licensing contract you sign, most of the time you are allowed to show your painting process and your new paintings on social media. The type of contract I sign because I am paid in advance and what I provide is exclusive to the client so I am not allowed to show anything until six months after the product has hit the store. So we're talking about a year, possibly a year and a half out in the future. Then I can show you guys what I painted. Lastly, when you finish, it is actually your responsibility to convert your original paintings into digital asset, digital file, prepped, color corrected, cleaned up, and sent it to the licensing agent. Um, there are only two conditions under which the licensing agent will not require you to that. Number one, you are as famous as Picasso because you simply do not ask Picasso to do that. You do it for Picasso. Or number two, you predate Photoshop and computer by a lot. Like we're talking about maybe you're in your late 60s, 70s or even 80s but I have heard that certain licensing companies still require senior artists who are really good at what they do by hand to learn how to use the computer all right on to my second set of paintings thank you guys so much for tuning in if you guys have any questions leave comments below I will try to answer or if enough people ask me about the same thing I will make another video ciao